before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called The Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our weekly coffee chats, the time during the week when we can just sit around globally with all our best friends with a cup of coffee or glass of milk, water, whatever you drink, and uh, maybe wine for some, depending on what time of the day it is, <laughs> um, or not, depending on no judgment here. It's a great, it's not, if it's nine o'clock in the morning and you're drinking a glass of wine, no judgment. It is a crazy time to be alive. So, so for those who are new to my channel, I know I've picked up quite a few follow followers, um, especially from the TikTok world. Yes. If you guys, I'm trying to get Catherine on TikTok. If you guys are not familiar, I'm now on TikTok. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers so we can do a live show on TikTok where you guys can jump in and join the live as well. So that all that information will be in the description box. Um, but for those who are new, this is my friend Catherine Edwards over across the pond, the creek. I'm, I'm now determined that it's not as we're not as far apart as they tell us we are in the UK. And we bi-weekly, so bi-weekly on my channel, bi-weekly on Catherine's channel, every other week we go back and forth to have these like coffee chats, which are which was Catherine's idea actually, which is brilliant because Catherine and I are both kind of nerdy. I hope you don't mind me saying that, Catherine. Oh, I'm a real nerd. I love being a nerd. Yeah. <laughs> we're both nerdy. We both have a, a, a very keen interest in health and wellness and spirituality. Catherine takes more of the, uh, she's a biologist, so so she goes, she's really good at looking at nerding out on the science and, and how that Im Im implies to us now in our modern times with spirituality as well. Whereas you guys know, I like doing deep dives into dead people because I like to spy on the shenanigans of those that aren't around anymore. And so, but these coffee chats for my new subscribers, this is where we kind of have just a kind of a vague topic where we're not really looking for an answer and we're just kind of discussing amongst friends, like different opinions on, on different things going on in our and, and the struggles of being human. And so if that's something you're interested in, if you're new to my channel, please make sure to go over and subscribe to Catherine's channel as well, especially if you're interested in things like alternative health, uh, wellness. Uh, Catherine and myself also get shadow banned a lot because we speak the truth. <laughs> so, um, so make sure you're constantly checking our videos to see uh, what, what new fun stuff has popped up. So first of all, how are you doing today, Catherine? I'm doing really good and I think you summed it up. I tell you what, the times, we've been saying this for a long while, but um, over here in the UK, we're having really, really weird storms and we all know it's, I've got loads of interviews like that on my channel, which you will not find because they're shadow bands to so look for the playlist. Um, do look for the playlist sometimes, folks, if you're on shadow band channels, because otherwise a lot of the videos won't come up. Yeah. Um, but the animals are picking up the different energy. You know, they really are. These aren't normal nature storms. They're definitely man-made storms and completely weird and wonderful. And I think at the moment, I think I'm feeling it. It feels like everyone's almost in a pressure cooker. I'd love to hear how the listeners are, uh, are dealing with things. But it feels like there's a, a pressure really building up. Obviously, you guys have got the big competition coming up. We've supposedly had our competition, which wasn't a competition at all. It was preordained, as most of us know. Most um, of our guests. Yeah, most of it is. So I think this conversation today about boundaries and triggers is going to be really, really important because boy, oh boy, are we seeing these getting confused, taken out on the wrong people and everything. And it can add a lot of misery and stress where it doesn't need to. Absolutely. And when you had this idea, I thought this was brilliant. So I think this is even for us as content creators 
And for anybody who's absolutely experienced any type of like abusive relationship where it's manipulative, especially emotionally manipulative, manipulative, you know, a trigger is a trigger, but a boundary is a boundary. And so sometimes, you know, for me personally, I get accused of being triggered when I'm actually just setting a boundary. You know, like we, we, I always say on my channel that I, I love of different opinions and I love the, the art of debate when it's respectful, but when you go into name calling, then that's a boundary. And I absolutely are digging at somebody's integrity as a human being because they have a separate opinion, opinion from you. That's a boundary, right? That, that you're not going to treat people like that on my channel. Not, you're not going to treat my subscribers that way. You're not going to treat me that way. You can disagree with me or my subscribers. Totally fine. But when you start going, digging at the person, and their their intention and their integrity. I will tell you a funny story. We I was over on um, my friend, uh, our friend Shanti. I was trying to remember the day we were. It was we had it. We had Brock or Mike on the show with us. We were talking about the Witch Wars of New York. Another friend of Catherine's as well. And so there was three of us up on the channel, and uh, we were over on Aquarius Rising Africa. And I was watching the chat because it was a live show, and there was somebody in the chat that was telling all these wild stories like I was having at one point I, I'll have to go back and watch the episode because I'm sure like I zoned out at one point because I was reading the chat and I was trying to figure out what this person was even talking about they were trying to uh, share a story of their experience but it was you know sometimes it's hard the chat's going by fast and so another person in the chat challenged them and kind of asked if they were a bot and like if they were spamming because it was it was a weird and I could see why this person would ask that they they were like is this spam like I don't I don't really understand what's going on from this one person and the other person that had the stories got very offended and tried to rebuke the person in the name of God this is all happening in the chat y'all like such drama for a Monday morning right um and and I and that's a perfect example of like you know obviously this other person was being triggered by this person questioning their story, it what it what and asking if it was spam or they but then they tried to like it on anyway. I thought that was a perfect example of what we're talking about now. This one oh, person was absolutely. confused and just was basically putting up a boundary, asking if this was spam. The other person got so upset that they tried to rebuke the person in the name of God, which in my opinion, that's taking the Lord's name in vain. Like when you're actually using God as a weapon, when the person is literally just asking you a question. So um, what are your thoughts on this, Catherine? Yeah, I think it's such an important issue because, you know, anyone who's on public platforms gets accused of this the whole time. And when we sort of say, when I say a little knowledge is a dangerous thing, it's not being condescending. Um, it's just a fact that pointing out that all of this, where we're, we're talking about triggers and boundaries, the responsibility lies with us as an individual. So for me, I mean, triggers and boundaries, we'll, we'll dive deep in a minute, but a trigger is an emotional response tied to a past trauma or unresolved um, wound. And so an example of that would be if Bryce, if I message Bryce, and I can see Bryce has opened the message and hasn't responded to me. If I'm insecure, I might then sort of say, oh, she's ignoring me. She doesn't like me. Oh, my God, she doesn't like what I've said. And I might go off into a story. I'll go into basically a disproportionate emotional reaction to that event. And how do I know it's a trigger and that it's my trigger? Because, you know, my husband wouldn't care at all whether someone responded to him at all from a message, let alone how quickly they did it. So the triggers are personal to you, to your unresolved per wounds, traumas, emotional wounds sort of thing. And it, there'll be an emotional response that the person who's being triggered will have. And it's often um, that emotional response is out of proportion to the actual situation. But a boundary might be something like, you know, if I'm speaking to Bryce and she sort of keeps um, messaging me at two o'clock in the morning, it's not my job. to. We're on different time zones. So I, Bryce can message me when she likes. My boundary is do I choose to take, turn my phone off? Do I, I might say to Bryce, I say, fine, if we've got things to discuss, feel free to send them through. But just to let you know, I only look at my phone in these times. Yeah. And yeah. then my job is not to get triggered when Bryce messages me at two o'clock in the morning. Because if that's a problem to me, I just ignore it or have my phone off. Yeah. So, 
you can get it people use it get them very very confused i think Bryce. and i think people use it a little bit in a narcissistic way where if they're not getting their own way we talk about this entitlement that so many people have this entitled attitude at the moment and a lot of people if someone doesn't agree with them they'll accuse the other person of being triggered but if you're putting an insult back on someone you're the one being triggered so if it's a, a trigger, you'll feel worse, you'll feel emotionally reactive, you'll feel more out of control. Withholding your own boundary puts you back in control of the situation and you should feel calmer once you sort of put that boundary in place. Does that make sense? Um, and I love that example of the cell phone. I'm like laughing as you're saying that. And I'm glad a lot of my friend are also content creators because that does happen a lot where somebody will text you and it takes you a couple of hours yeah. to respond because you're filming. Um, you're on a live. Uh, I turn my phone on silent when I'm researching, so I won't get the messages until I've actually put the books down. And as I get older, maybe this is just getting older, but sometimes I'll see a text message and I'll have the answer. Like Catherine might say, hey, are we good to film an hour earlier on Thursday than we normally do? In my head, I'm like, yeah, that's cool. But I'll forget, you know, I've answered. So there's all these different. So usually when people don't respond right away to a text, even if they've read it, it's normally a very logical reason as to why they haven't. Mm -hmm. And you're right. Like so many people all of a sudden take offense to that because they're insecure within themselves. And yeah, that's absolutely true. Cause we are, most of my friends now that I film with are on different time zones. And so yeah. there are many times where I'll get a message from, you know, our friend in South Africa when it's the middle of the night for me. And, and thank God she doesn't expect a response right away because she knows that it's the middle. So I, I, that's an incredible example that I think we all can relate to. I'll tell you another example because the whole thing, like when you're in a narcissistically, like emotionally relationship, one of the things that happens is that the narcissist will like pick on you, pick on you, pick on you, pick on you. And the minute you put a boundary up, and defend yourself they accuse you of being them that's right? right and that's kind of but that's a boundary right and i'll give you guys a kind of a funny example this was like right when i was first starting to get bigger on youtube and i i used to film in my front room and so the ring light which i will show i so our audience can decide to kind of see the difference we all have ring lights um if you guys can kind of see the difference here of what it looks like with the light and then with you know there's a difference yeah but when I used where I used to film, I, my lights above me now, it used to be like right in my face. And so you could see on my eyes, you could see the ring. You could yeah. see my pupils look a little weird. Right. But it was obviously the ring light. Yeah. Well, again, this is right when my, my channel first started getting bigger. And I had some random person accuse me of being a I don't know if we can say the H word, one of these addicts because of the way my eyes looked. Now, I've done some wild things in my life, but that is not one of them. And the mm -hmm. reason why is because I hear it so good that I don't want to, you know, you don't ever want to stop. So I've never, that would never be something I would ever, unless I had like a week to live, maybe, you know, but like that, that's something. So, and I, I basically responded. I said, I think you're confused. I think what you're seeing is actually the ring light in my eye. And just so you know, it's really not, a, not cool to accuse somebody of something that's so dangerous to their reputation when you don't know that it's true or not. And then somebody responded under me that I was triggered. Mm. This person had literally just accused me of being an H addict on a public platform for something silly, like a ring light in my eyes. And she, she said it was because of the way my eyes looked, which was the, yeah. ring. you know, and that's, that's another example of, no, I set my boundary and I said, no, that's not cool. You can't accuse somebody of these types of things when you don't know that for sure. I mean, I, I, I mean, hello, if I were one of those, I probably would, wouldn't wear sleeveless shirts almost every day, no matter how hot it is in Georgia, because you'd be able to see all over my arms, right? So, you know. Um, have oh, you had such a good point. And I love, I, I pulled out a quote that Brené Brown said, that when we're triggered, we stop listening to the person talking and focus on defending ourselves. So if you're not quite sure about whether something's triggering you, look at how much you're having to defend yourself. But that's different to a boundary. Um, so if it's provoking a strong emotional reaction. So Bryce, when she was talking about that, I hope you can see, she wasn't sitting there saying, oh, my God, that's so awful. She wasn't overly emotional about it. She was just saying, well, actually, no, this is a bit out of order and this is 
why, you know, in a calm, composed way. So you can tell straight away that wasn't a trigger. And normally you're only going to be triggered by something where there's some degree of truth to that. Might not be the right thing, but say Bryce wasn't a heroin addict, but was an alcoholic then someone triggering an addiction, someone saying something about an addiction might trigger an over-response from that person if they're thinking, well, oh my God, they they know about this other issue or something. You know, they, it's triggering, with a trigger, there's normally some feeling of shame that comes out and this desperate to defend ourselves. But a boundary of saying, actually, you know, teaching, this is not how I'm prepared to be spoken to, so you and I get the whole time when if some if we're discussing something, we always say we are not pretending we've got the answers right. at all. Coffee chats. They're coffee chats. We're not pretending they've answers. We're discussing just like we would in the pub or a coffee shop over friends. But we're discussing our point of views and people can politely disagree with them. If someone comes and says something, both you and I are very clear on our boundaries, on our channels. If yeah. you are you will be deleted and blocked yeah. actually youtube will delete comments as well which sometimes we don't even see them right so right. again we'll get all these people sort of saying why did you delete my product why did you do this well there's only two reasons that either youtube or us would delete your product uh, your um comment you're being abused yeah so yeah. that's your trigger. You don't like the fact that you are not allowed to just respect people. We'll never delete a comment. I've never, ever, ever deleted anyone or a comment about something that I've disagreed with at all. But if someone calls you something really disgusting or insults your guest or something like that, then, oh, too right, I'll delete you because that's just not ex acceptable behaviour. So a boundary should be putting you back in control of the situation. Yeah. Boundary is just like I wouldn't accept come, someone coming into my house. If I had a party and someone came in and they started abusing all my guests, I'd politely ask them to leave. And if they didn't leave politely, I might choose some other enforcement action to get them out of the house because I would not let them come in and abuse myself and my guests in my house. It's the same on the channel. Absolutely. And, and yeah, even with my subscribe, because we have some of the best subscribers on the internet, really, like 99.9% .9 of the people are amazing. And they add so much value to these conversations. And so I get protective over people who have trusted my platform. I'm sure I can say the same for you, Catherine, who trust us and come to our comment section, because we know we hold this boundary, they, they know they're safe to give their opinion. And if I see a response to somebody's opinion, that's even if it's not towards me, but towards another a subscriber, I delete, I will not tolerate that either. Like you cannot speak to my subscribers that way either. Yeah. You can disagree with them, that's fine, but you can't, you can't uh, tr like jump and attack them for a belief, exactly. you know? And um, it's, um, you know, and I think if you go and look back through a lot of our videos, Catherine, you'll see we've left comments up. I mean, I had, um, yeah. I, I hardly ever check rumble comments anyway. That's just one that I don't really check. That. Sometimes I'll check, but sometimes it's just too much to, to, to with everything going on in the world and all of our other work. I usually just leave it those comments. But, um, someone I had just recently filmed with said that he noticed some, somebody we had done a show together and somebody was making some negative comments to the way that I ran the show, not about me, but the way I ran the show. And I and he was like, I just want you to know, I didn't, I don't feel that way. I was like, that's fine. I was like, if they don't like how I ran the show, that's I don't, you know, that's fine. That's just their opinion. They're not co name calling me. They just don't like the way I ran the show, you know. So there's yeah. a difference between there, there's a total difference between between this and, you know, it, I don't know if social media has made it worse because I I just don't think that this is how you know there is a lot there is a lot said that when you have to see someone face to face, you're typically not going to react the way you will behind the computer screen on social media. And I think part of that is because when you're face to face with somebody, you see their humanity as well. You know, it's not I just. Think so. And you're reading the energy. I think the trouble is, and I think it got, I mean, social media has always been an issue. And actually I saw something it's interesting, you see, I, there's always, you and I, we, we often talk about things and, and the answer is often it depends because there's so few black and white situations. There are some, of course, it's wrong. Yeah. But there's still an it depends, you know, what do you call money? 
self-defense you exactly. know so, exactly. um, uh, there, there, there's always it depends and it's very rarely black or white so I saw and I haven't looked into it properly because interestingly in the UK I must just say in the UK this morning for a while rumble was completely down which I've never seen before so there's a lot of weird stuff happening but the reason this is relevant is I saw something flash up and I have not had a chance to look into it yet that in Australia they've passed something that is going to ban children from using social media. Now, in one respect, I think a lot of people would think that's a really positive, proactive thing. I mean, it depends what age and how they talk and things, ah. but actually we know that since social media has been available to children, it's had a terrible detrimental effect on most of their mental health. It's very rare that you see a young person using social media that you can point to a fact about how it's enhanced their health and well-being. Right, right. Get. But this is a, when you're looking at the a, a trigger and a boundary, it's like personal control is really important to look at it. So if, if you're sort of thinking, well, um Catherine's triggered me about this how do you know because it makes you feel out of control you feel threatened you feel shamed you feel just you know you feel that you don't know how to respond you you're immediately going into that an emotional uh, response that's it so when you're in the reacting from an emotional point you're not really in control of the situation whilst how do you know if you're putting a boundary in place well actually when you put a boundary you feel in control you're not responding from an emotional point you choose how and when to communicate that boundary um so i think when you're looking and you're really going straight into that emotion there's certain things people will say to me that will really trigger me um and i know that that's me and how do i know it's me because they wouldn't trigger Bryce. right it's not her wound it's my wound um, as something happened with a friend recently and they, they had something that they perceived as being let down and they were really triggered by it. And I knew very clearly that was their trigger because that wouldn't have bothered me at all. So it can work both ways. We've all got our own emotional wounds and unresolved things that we haven't dealt with. Um, but I think what happens with social media is people think they can get away with anything and they can project. And you and I have spoken a lot and done a lot of videos on this sense of entitlement. Just because you can get a lot of free content on YouTube yeah. doesn't mean that you should disrespect the people doing it. And, and once people start to get this feeling of entitlement, then they're much more likely to get triggered easily when things don't go their way. Absolutely. Absolutely. They don't like it when someone comes back with a boundary. If you're in the person that's being triggered, you will not like that person holding a boundary. Absolutely. That's 100. That, and that's the, that's part of even though not every, every trigger is related to narcissism, but that is why narcissists don't want they don't they feel entitled to your time and your energy i'll tell you guys are really and it's so funny you're talking about that like when your friend won't be i think my boyfriend's not like your husband where he's very uh -huh. he's way more grounded than i am he's way more logical than <laughs> his moon's in virgo mine's in scorpio so maybe that's and here, mine's in scorpio too. <laughs> very emotional and he's he's yeah. out of space and his inner world is very earth based so one of his teachers from the past not not his main teacher, Patabi Joyce, but a female teacher that another Indian female teacher that he had for a while, um, an Ayurvedic teacher. Um, and I stories he's told me about her, my gut always didn't feel right about this particular teacher. I always felt like there was something off, but whatever, that's his his history, his story. I don't know this person. Well, he got an email the other day and he hasn't seen this teacher since we've been together. It's been a long time since he's actually communicated with this particular teacher. He got an email the other day from her, a mass email to all of her students where she was promoting, um, we'll say the blue team for the competition coming up, which is obviously not the person that we are promoting. Well, at first he got very upset by this because I think too, when you're looking at a spiritual teacher, you hope your spiritual teacher is at least aware of what's going on in the world and not completely duped. But then it was a deeper thing too, because as t like on my YouTube channel, I can talk about my personal opinions. But when I go into my, into the Shala to teach, most of my, my students don't even know I have a YouTube channel. Yeah. 
I'm never going to talk about politics. I'm never going to, I'm never going to tell somebody what to do. All I'm going to do is I'm going to tell them what to do in the class as far as where to put your hands, where to put your feet, what you should be feeling. What does this mean? What does that mean? But as far as your life outside of the shala, that's none of my business. And I do believe that by shalas promoting a candidate, any candidate, even if it's for the person I like, I feel like that's wildly inappropriate. And I feel okay. mildly inappropriate for what you're doing because you're trying, you're not a cult. You're trying to ha help people to stand in their own skin and make their own decisions. And you're not supposed to be interrupting their karma, all that kind of stuff. And we sat with this email for a while and we talked about it for a very long time. Like I could see him kind of talking through his triggers and he was going to email this particular teacher back because her big thing is women's health. She has shamed women before in front of him who had, we'll say had the baby removed but yet the candidate she promotes is all about. So there's like a lot of contradictions to her own teachings. And he was going to list all this stuff and send it back to her. And I was like, yeah, you should do it. Cause I was triggered too, because of my past impressions of this person. I've never in my gut have never been good. Like I kind of felt like she was a bit of a liar. That was kind of my gut. And maybe my gut was right. However, at the end of the day, he was like, you know what? I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to, that's it. I'm just, I'm not going to respond. I'm just never going to communicate with her again because she crossed a line and that's now my boundary. But the fact that he was able to talk through his emotions yeah. with me without reacting outside of our home, right? He didn't take that anger and throw it back at her or throw it at any other fellow student. He just talked to me, which your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your husband or your wife should ultimately be like your ultimate best friend, right? That you share everything with. And we talked, he taught, he talked himself down and got his head clear. And I was still wanting him to email her back because I was still super pissed. And I think that was my past aggression too towards this woman. But at the end of the day, he was able to then just put that boundary up and just mm -hmm. be like, he made her decision. She's lost me now as a student. She's probably lost other people. That's her karma. I don't need to now, you know, I, I'm just not going to, sometimes silence is golden, you know, yeah. and so the, another example of where triggers and boundaries exist together, but are done. Like I said, he did it in a healthy way. I would have not have done it in a healthy way. I would have been like, Gee, like back on the email being like, How yeah. could you? <laughs> you know, um, it's such an interesting one. And I love this. And I'd love your opinion on this, please, guys. So a lot of time I see people will put a boundary up to protect a trigger. Yeah, and I heard someone too. talk about it, and I can't remember who it is. So apologies, I can't remember. It was in a book I read, and I really can't remember who said it. So whoever it is, feel free to tell us in the comments. But it's like, imagine you've got a thorn, a big thorn in your thigh. And when someone comes towards you, you're like protectives. So you put a boundary. You don't want anyone near your thigh because you know it's going to really hurt if they touch the thorn. Well, your job, your self-worth is to get the thorn out mm -hmm. and heal the wound but sometimes people put boundaries and they think oh it's a boundary thing but all they're trying to do is not agree with it not get the trigger triggered or the wound reopened again so say for example if i go back to the text thing say if i'm quite a jealous or suspicious person say i've been cheated on in the past or whatever it might be i haven't got a lot of self-confidence so say i want to um you know if, if my husband you know doesn't respond back to me i'm going to get well, what are you doing why is what's more important than me i'm going to get triggered by that um as when you're friends with someone if you're working with someone if you're a relationship my job is to say to my husband look i realize this is a trigger for me this is why this isn't i haven't healed this yet so if i am overreactive and his job is to tell me what his boundary is and his boundary is his boundary i don't have to accept it so his boundary is look you know i'm busy i only look at my phone twice a day I and mean, my husband never looks at his phone so you know it's nothing personal and i'm not going to keep checking every time or put notifications on just because this is a trick of you i get it i get it's like this and when i see it I'll respond to what I was doing. So you work through these problems together. So I take ownership for my trigger. Um, but similarly, I might have another one. Say as a parent, if my daughter's traveling home late at night, I might say to her, look, please just tell me. It's really important for me that you tell me you're home yeah. safely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And if someone ignores that, that's disrespecting a really important boundary. Yeah. 
that is has got justification it's not an emotional most mothers would want to know that their child was home safe at night yeah but yeah you know i I have to remind whenever we drive back from florida i always because we always stay halfway we don't need yeah. to play with the dog it's just easier but i always when we get back to atlanta I, my my boyfriend's in his 50s and i always tell him make sure you text your parents because his, his mom always asks please let me know that you guys got home safely That's safely yeah my boyfriend's like your husband like he doesn't he leaves his i mean like he leaves his phone all the time like he does he's yeah. not he's not, att- he's not attached to his home- phone at the hip. And yeah. so he will sometimes, and I'll, I'll remind him because it's respectful to his mom and he gets it. And he's like, okay, cool. And he just sends his parents a text. We made it home, you know, but um, it's so funny you say that with boundaries too. Cause I, when, when I first started dating my boyfriend, we had, we sat down and we had, and actually this is the first boyfriend I've ever dated who actually sat down with me and asked what my boundaries were in a relationship and to make sure we had, and we both have very similar, like no cheating, monogamy, that you know that's a bit we have very similar boundaries which was healthy but you know it, it, what's interesting Catherine what you talked about I have been cheated on so is mm-hmm. he but I've been cheated on a lot in relationships and when we first started dating he was still in contact as a friend with a, just an ex-girlfriend but it made me uncomfortable and I said something to him I said look I, this makes me a little uncomfortable that she and and I could kind of sense that she was texting him more and more and more the closer we got and and he goes okay and so he just stopped text. He stopped that communication because he knew that that and and when he since he did that, he developed a trust with me because all of his assistants are females and I know his assistants. So he gets text messages from females all the time, but they're all work related. But I trust him. And the fact that he leaves his phone sitting around everywhere anyway means that he's got nothing to hide, you know. And so sometimes when you are clear with those boundaries, instead of just getting triggered and reacting and just saying, yeah, this is this is the clear. This is what's happened to me in the past. This is what I don't want to. This is the position I don't want to be in again. And the person respects that there's a, it, it makes the relationship healthier because there's a yeah. understanding, right? And so that trust is built, you know, and it is, you know, I, I know for like, for, again, for my, my boyfriend, when he's at work, I know some people when they're at work, they can text, but my boyfriend can't with his job. He can't text yeah. with his job. He can't be on his phone. So, you know, that is, I have seen girls more specifically girls. I know boys do this too sometimes, but more spe- specifically women, when their husband or their partner is in a, a, a situation where they literally can't get to their phone, but they're not responding, there is a trigger there. Yeah. You know, I would say like doctors, but I will tell you, my sister, when she gave birth to her first child, my nephew, the OBGYN delivering the baby, an assistant was holding her cell phone up to her here. And while she was delivering Charlie, she was talking to her daughter because her daughter was getting ready for her prom. So some people can be delivering baby and talking to their daughter about getting ready. And my sister was cool with that. She was like, she obviously knows what she's doing. If she yeah. has a casual conversation about prom while delivering a baby. But I think that's so important. And I love that you talked about like the thorn in your side. We see this with animals. Like when Ravi yeah. gets like a spur in his paw, he'll yeah. have his paw and then my boyfriend will go to be like, buddy, can I see it? And at first he pulls his paw back like he doesn't want. But then eventually, because he trusts us, he lets my boyfriend look at his paw and yank out whatever needs to be. Yeah. You know, but you you see that they immediately react to want to like hide. Protect their wound. And, you know, yeah. if you've got a trigger, it is a wound. It is yeah. a wound. So, but if you recognize that, you can communicate it to people and so long as most people are really happy with that, like, you know, I might say to Bryce, look, you know, a, a real trigger of mine is people letting me down at the last minute. And so I might sort of say, look, I'm working on that, but it, it would be really helpful for me. And a boundary for me is unless there's an emergency, can we have 24 hours notice if we're going to reschedule? That yeah. would be an example of a boundary explaining it, but I can still also work on my uh, my trigger, you know, my it, my trigger is mine to work on, but it's also good to tell people that are close to you what your triggers are you're working on if you have a relationship where you're safe to do that because that's where there will be some negotiations and sometimes people will be a lot more tolerant if they understand that's something you're working on. Yeah. Um, so we saw this a lot in the... I'm never sure what we're allowed to say now and what we're not because the trouble is they change it all the time. And for those people... <laughs> new to youtube they change the the laws retrospectively so just because we're allowed to say now 
in six months' time, or come the winter when they try and roll it out again, we might not be, and then they'll go back and take off videos or, or give you strikes the way you said it in the past. But, you know, this is where we saw this play, this evil genius plan played out so well because it was building on everyone's triggers. You know, people wanted to protect their loved ones, but everyone's definition and boundary of what that looked like was very different. So, you know, most normal people never never went near 90-year-old relatives when they were ill anyway. Yeah. So they didn't need to be told to socially distance to do that. That was something that was respectable and a clear boundary that any normal person would have in place anyway. So you, it's very easy to manipulate if you're looking at mass agendas. It's very easy to manipulate turning someone's boundary into... Uh, a sort of narcissistic turning it against you and using it in that sort of way and making out that it's that person's trigger when actually it's not at all you're being deliberately manipulative and just ignoring very clear human decency boundaries I had that perfect example I had that happen a couple of weeks ago I put up one of my shorts for my TikTok about um, I think it was one of the Jesse James one and I said the word unalived yeah. instead of the M word because definitely on TikTok you can't say the M M U R der word you have to say unalived and it was just a video i and i i i'm trying to be safe here on youtube as well because that's a word that's been um compromisable on youtube in the past too and i had somebody get really pissy and and kind of yell at me for taking a knee to the matrix for using these words and i would be like wait a minute you're on my channel you're coming into my house basically and demanding that i change my rules to fit mm -hmm. your triggers and i responded and i was like you know, first of all, YouTube will have no problem taking our channels down. So oh, we're just shooting ourselves. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. We're, we're basically screwing our, so they'll just take it down. And so you're, most of us can stay up, play within the rules by using pretend words, but still get the point across to the people watching us. So that's, that's us being clever and being smart. If we all get over on Rumble or BitChute, we're in an echo chamber. Other people don't even know that those platforms exist, right? And then I, you know, and I, and I, 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 then I went on to say, you know, you're yelling at me for using a word within the rule. And let, let's be clear. I want to be clear about this. Let's talk about YouTube for a second. YouTube is a private business. Yeah. They can make whatever rules they want. That's yeah. their boundaries. Absolutely. Those are their boundaries. Now, if they're working with the government, that becomes a crime. But if it's just a private business... They can do whatever they want. That's their rules. It's their house. That's their boundaries. And we can either choose to respect them or be removed, right? Yeah. And so, and so I'm choosing to try my best to respect the rules so I can keep my work up. You know, that's also that this trigger, this reaction was very disrespectful to the years I've been on YouTube and not all my deep dives that I could compromise it in a second for trying to appease this person's ego and entitlement. Yeah. You know that, you know, and I said to this person, I was like, you can't really judge me for using words to stay within the rules of YouTube when you're still paying your taxes, paying for your car registration, you know? Watching on the platform that's put those boundaries in place and those rules in the first place. You know, if you don't like it, it's like it's like my, someone I know who's, daughter's decided they're no longer a girl anymore and, and want to be known as a, a, a boy and have changed the name to boys girl but still want to continue going to an all girls school you know so this is the thing it's like this self responsibility plays into it so in that person that's a perfect example if it was their trigger your boundary and because you upheld your boundary they had a hissy fit and tried to turn it back on you so if someone's stating a clear boundary and you don't like it just because you don't like it doesn't mean that they haven't got a right to uphold their boundary and stick to it and in, in a boundary like you just said then it said in a very non-emotional way if this is my boundary this is why you don't ever have to explain your boundaries but sometimes it's polite and helpful because it will help people understand where you're coming from you know I had an incident with a friend I've got a really good friend or, or I did have um, and they're funny. They're really funny, but they're funny at other people's expenses. Yeah. And it's 
always turns into a bitch fest. It's, it goes from being funny little jokes to turning into a bitch fest very quickly. So I made a decision that I wasn't going to indulge in this. And when they started talking about someone, I said, look, you know, I'm really not comfortable with talking about this. Let's not go there with people. Let's just keep it respectful. And they didn't like that at all. But they don't have to accept my boundary. Both sides, if their boundary is they want to be able to do that, both sides can choose to move away. Yeah, that's exactly. Exactly. And so me upholding my boundary was important for me because I wanted to get out of this cycle of, you know, coming away from starting off laughing at a couple of jokes and coming away from feeling that we'd really overstepped the mark. Um, so people won't like your boundaries, but if you're clear that it's a, a boundary and works for you, you won't mind about that. You well, they say that the mind. people that the people that get pissed about your boundaries are the reason why you need boundaries in the first place. You know, that is your, okay. your friends, your real friends are going to be respectful of your rules. And like, you wouldn't go like Catherine, let's say like we were going to someone's house where they didn't allow shoes in the house. I would take my shoes off. Completely. Her house. I would no question. I do that. My neighbor's Japanese. They don't wear shoes. It's disrespectful. You bring evil spirits in. Exactly. It's, it's very, very similar in India. And I mean, think about this way. Like Ravi, my dog, he's a member of this family. This is his house too. Mm -hmm. Actually, he's kind of the king of the house because he pays none of the bills and gets all of the, all of the, <laughs> all of the good yeah. stuff. But he's allowed on the sofa. He sleeps mm -hmm. in our bed. The only table he's not allowed on that he always tries to get on is our big chopping block in the kitchen. But in, in fairness, t we're not allowed to stand on it either. So no, <laughs> humans aren't. Exactly. He always tries to get on it. That's the one we always have to tell him get down. But um, but it would be like somebody coming into my house, seeing my dog sitting on the sofa because it's his sofa too, and then trying to tell us and trying to get the dog off the sofa because he's someone that doesn't believe animals should be on the furniture. Mm. No, this is my house. Ravi's a part of my family. This is our rules in our house. So, so when you go into somebody's house, when you think about going on, especially with the stuff with YouTube, when you go into someone's YouTube channel, it's like going into their house, mm. you know? And so, you know, for the person who left that comment, would you say that in someone's house about they, if they asked you to take your shoes off or if they allowed animals to sit in there on their furniture and you didn't like that, would you say something? No, because it's their house. So yeah. And that's, that's their rules and their boundaries. I can't wait Catherine to see. And I love the whole thing you said about gossiping too, because I've always said there's a difference between venting to your friends about something yeah. bothering you with the situation with another person and gossiping. Like I've been to do you Catherine. You massive. Me. Yeah. We should. And it's, it's usually a situation that we should both share knowledge in and we're seeking like, Am I wrong in this situation? Do you feel this? Yeah. I need to figure out what to do. But when you're just gossiping, I mean, the stuff I talk to Catherine about in, in my life, I, I may talk, might talk to my boyfriend about too, but I don't really go out and tell everybody else, you know? So it's not, you know, it's, are you trying to find a solution or are you just that's, a bitch, you know? That's such an important point. I really want people to hear that. It's such an important point because when none of this is about suppressing your emotions. Right. I could list off 10 triggers now that I haven't cleared at all. Um, but there's, you know, okay, so um, shaming people for their food choices. Um, we'll still, uh, look, okay, so there's this huge carnivore or, or vegetarian debate and things in between. So it's a big trigger for me when people say, every you know being a vegan is eating bill gates burgers because it's not that's no, nothing to i never I love it. Yeah. And actually vegan is more like most people would say plant-based if it's yeah. a health-based decision and vegan is more of an ethical based decision but you know a boundary for me is being respectful to other people's choices and not trying to enforce them onto your uh, on other people and what you said about that none of this is about suppressing your feelings so when you're triggered it's really healthy to tell people you trust your triggers because they will be able to not only will they, they be able to be more understanding they might also have some constructive help for you and when you're taught we're all going to have situations we've had situations and we will continue to do where exactly that look this is how I'm seeing it how do you see it Bryce because am I overreacting is this my wound that I'm acting out and actually there was nothing wrong with what the person did or actually are they really overstepping a boundary here and that, I mean, that 
fine to have those conversations. It's important to have Absolutely. those Absolutely. And that's why, like, I mean, to be honest with our audience, before we film this morning, I talked to Catherine about something within the content creator world that I have been kind of frustrated about, and she has the same experience. And so I was asking, like, kind of the same thing, like, kind of getting it off my chest hmm. and kind of getting validation. Because if you had said to me, actually, Bryce, like, this is all on you, like, you're totally overreacting. I'd be like, okay, let me think about this another way. You know, like, but you know, that's a totally when you have a trusted friend, a confidant, mm -hmm. that's why they're called confidants that you can say, I know this conversation isn't going to leave you and me, but this is how I'm feeling. I love this person, but something's not right. You know, it, you know, it's in, in any situation, any situation. And I love what you said about the whole food thing. I will say because we've done shows because you and I both are avid i just really don't think that human beings should be eating animals i don't think that it goes i think it goes against um consent i think it's not good i think we can get everything we need from the earth um as far as our vitamins and minerals that's my opinion i have my reason for believing that that's my ethical opinion on um on animal life um and we've done some shows on that where i've said that is my opinion right and I have gotten emails from people screaming at me, yelling at me, this, that, this, this, and this, and this, and this. And I just email them back and I'm like, I'm sorry you're triggered by my opinion, but it doesn't change my opinion that, mm. you know, but that triggers. Because you're offended doesn't mean you're right. I had someone exactly. do a whole hate campaign on me just because I didn't agree with them that the carnivore diet was one, healthy from a biologist's perspective, and two, that. Now, it doesn't mean I'm right. It and you do what's right for you, but I, at the moment, am very strong. And I have I heard a very brilliant interview the other day, which I didn't agree with, but I took the time to listen because I know it's something that can trigger me about how someone was saying about the whole, you know, animal animals deliberately sacrificing themselves to other animals. And I'm like, well, you haven't seen my cats with mice and mice and birds desperately trying to get away and uh, a fox trying to get something that that rabbit isn't saying come and eat me but i'm always prepared to learn and and i've changed my mind over millions of things in the years but just because someone has a nice story for it doesn't make it true no it's and, and no yeah i think yeah. this is where we get confused you know like any person who drastically changes their diet in any way will notice significant change straight away you will if you're a carnivore and you go all vegan if you're a vegan and you go all carnivore anytime you make a muffin change your body will react to that and will purge from that but what's sustainable and and i don't care what anyone else eats i i've never once actually no i have i did when i was with my husband um that was a long while ago before i knew better though um and actually, he agreed with me, so I wasn't really persuasive. But apart from my husband, and that's a different story, I've never once, I've never, I work with clients all over the world, I've never tried to persuade someone into a particular eating habit, ever, ever, ever. I will persuade them to eat healthier within what their belief systems are. So if you're a meat eater, I'll persuade them to make better choices. If you're a vegan, I'll persuade them to make better choices or educate them so they've got the choice. But this is the problem with a trigger is, is if it triggers you by Bryce and I saying that we don't think humans should eat meat, that is your trigger. That's your emotional wound. And if you're comfortable enough in your decision, it won't trigger you. So I've seen all the programs about plants having feelings and emotions, and I believe it, but it doesn't trigger me at all. Do I believe it's true? Yes. Do I believe that I can't be a breatharian at the moment? Yes. Um, do I believe it's possible for people to be breatharians? Yes. But it doesn't mean I've got the skill to do it. And there's lots of things I believe are possible that I haven't got the skill, competence, or the drive to develop that skill or competence drive. So I think this, this going back to the subject matter, the triggers and boundaries, both of them are things that you have to put in place. But well, the trigger's not voluntary. The trigger is there within you and it will be exposed. A boundary is a voluntary action that will bring you some peace and control to the situation. Yeah. And I think, you you know, we all can all tell when we're reacting from an emotional place. We know. Absolutely. I think it's such, a, again, such an, I'm glad you brought this up because I think this is such an important conversation 
not just for those who manipulate us, but for ourselves to be clear, not be like fog, foggy on like what is actually happening and not be to be manipulated that by setting a boundary as you being triggered. Cause no, that's not the case at all. Um, and anybody accusing you of being triggered because you set a boundary is what is again, the reason why you need to set a boundary in the first place, right? It's for people yeah. like that, that will, that will take your, take your energy. And, and with the food thing, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't walk around. I mean, I live right in the middle of Atlanta. The, I'm right on Peachtree, which is not doxing myself because Peachtree goes all the way through Atlanta, but there's restaurants everywhere. We walk up there. I see people eating hamburgers and all the time. I'm not stopping and be like, you should, no, I don't. I'm like, yeah. your husband, that's what you're doing. But for my opinion, my ethical decision is if I'm missing, do you get vitamins and minerals from meat? Absolutely you do, but you can also get them from plants and men and, and other sources and that's my choice to do that because i don't believe that we should be eating other living beings and for the law of one's perspective animals are their consciousness is closer to ours where a plant a, a 1d is a, a, it, their consciousness is is trying to get to 2d so it's it's there's just a different there's different laws there there's different regulations and i just um you know, I, I mean, I see it with my deep dives where people get mad because in one minute I'm looking at Tartarian timeline, the next minute I'm going back to our official narrative. And I always say over and over and over again, because we don't know what the truth is. So I'm just going to continue to do, but look at both. And, you know, people get all offended. I'm like, so you're offended that I'm looking back at the official narrative when we don't actually know, you know, and so just being practical and being grounded and and what's actually happening around you and again, rec yeah, what's happening is recognizing those triggers because when those triggers pop up, that's a good aha moment for you. As Ram Dass would say, that's your interesting. Ah, interesting. I I reacted that way. Why? Interesting. You know, let me investigate this. So I can't wait to hear what our um our friends watching drinking their coffee or their wine with us. I can't wait. And I, I just wanted to say one more thing. Anytime you react with an insult, so if you have to call someone, or, or it's more likely to be the people that are listening to this have been called it by their friends and family. If someone, if the only thing they can say to you about your opinion is to label you as a conspiracy theorist or, or whatever that label might be, or an anti or whatever it might be, then that's their trigger. That's showing that they're triggered by you holding a different opinion or a different boundary. Look at how much that boundary of who didn't and didn't take the intervention yeah. triggered people. It triggered people on both sides. And when you're really clear about your boundaries, you don't get triggered in the same way. You just don't. And I think having these conversations with people is really, really important and being open to that feedback. So something happened to me this week where I had that conversation with a friend and I said, someone's done this and blah, blah, blah. I'm, what do you think? And they actually came back to me and they said, well, I think that's your trigger because I wouldn't see it like that at all. I'd see it as a compliment that they were copying you, you know, because it was someone that was copying a lot of my content and um, they were like, well, you're seeing it as a trigger, but I see it as a compliment. I was like, okay, fair point. That's my work then. You know, you've got, I trust your opinion. You're a very balanced person and you, she knows me well enough to say, no, 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 Catherine, I think that's your issue. And and that's how we learn and that's how yeah. we encounter things and we, we don't get so emotionally caught up in things that really don't matter. I actually, in saying this, I, when we get off air, Catherine, I'm going to, sh I know you had asked me about a Netflix special the other night and I told you to watch Bad Monkey, but there's another you, FYI, guys, Bad Monkey is really funny if you want to watch it. But um, there's another series I'm going to send you that I think would be great for us to talk about when it comes to boundaries, what is right and what is wrong, especially with animals. I'm going to I'm gonna talk – when we get off air, I'll, t I'll tell you about it because I, I was actually – we were finishing it up last night and I was thinking, I wonder what, cause my boyfriend and I were debating this particular series. And um, I was like, I wonder what Catherine would think about this, you know? So anyway, guys, but again, for those who are new to this, I know again, welcome. If you're new to, to this, this channel, um, please make sure you're following Catherine um, if you're new. And especially if you like all of the alternative stuff, uh, make sure you share her videos as well. I'm also going to put your Instagram, Catherine, it's a huge Instagram following guys. So if you like little stuff, tidbits of information and knowledge that can send you on your own rabbit hole of rediscovering your health make sure you're following Catherine on instagram please guys go follow me over on tiktok even though Catherine's not really on tiktok if i get to a thousand uh well, I, am, I am on tiktok but as a holistic biologist so it's sort of more on the health side of things rather than i'm just going to check who i am yeah so i can go live on tiktok actually but oh. i'm on 
holistic well, biologist. So if we I, could think, that, I, would, I thought that would be fun to try eventually is to go live on TikTok. Definitely. Because I know like if we did a live, Catherine, and I have to figure out how to do it because I've just opened my TikTok. Guys. And thank you guys so much for being so supportive because I'm, I, I was laughing with someone. I was like, I feel like the oldest person on TikTok because I'm like trying That's to do me. It. That's me. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> All these young, yeah. cute cute people on TikTok and I'm like, how do I do the green screen? Um but yeah we I can think you're doing brilliantly. Yeah, I think <laughs> you're doing brilliantly. But so we will definitely collaborate on that. Yeah, we can I don't do know how to go live. I've never gone live on there. With TikTok art, we can actually even do like a thing, Catherine, I believe, where our subscribers can like jump in the box with us. Like we oh, can bring cool. people off and on to like comment. So that might be fun. So you guys make yeah. sure you're telling Catherine and myself on TikTok too. So we can, we can, what did a, a drunk grandma Nancy say? TikTok, tic-tac-toe winner. <laughs> what did she say yeah. about the state of the union? Like, um, but uh but anyway we can tic-tac-toe winner if you guys come and follow us we can all have an actual an actual chat with you guys um if we can get there get those numbers in so all right you guys well thank you so much Catherine. i hope you guys are having i love that yeah we'll thanks be, so much we'll be on Catherine's channel next week guys so again make sure you're subscribed to chat Catherine as well and we will talk to you all soon bye everybody bye No